So I'm the elementary person up here because last year at NCSM I said to Jim, how come there are no elementary people? Don't ask Jim any questions if you don't want to be up here next year. Um, I did give this a subtitle, Things My Math Teacher Should Have Never Taught Me. I'm going to. So about, a little bit about me. Um, yeah, that's me. Um, I was the first endorsed K-8 math specialist in the state of Ohio back in 1976. I was five years old at the time. I taught fifth grade math for six years, and oh, that 15 seconds is going fast. Anyway, that picture was from our first year book, my first year teaching, and a student on Facebook found it. Um, so let's talk about whole numbers. This is a problem that we give kids in second or third grade. Somehow, $40 turns into $39.99. What happened to the penny? Then we have, I get a break here, the no purpose zero. I know we don't give kids too many three digit times three digit multiplication problems, but when we used to, somehow we had that magic row of zeros that would appear because the kids just followed the algorithm. Then we have censored language that we use in the mathematics class, watch your language, and the language that we use that causes misconceptions. Division. So how would most of your kids read this problem? Nine goes into 27. Um, that was not the kids in my class. Oh, I'm going to have the same problem you did with my cartoons. Um, reducing fractions. So we have 15 25ths. When we reduce it, does it get smaller? <laughs> or when we reduce it the way we're taught, because whatever you do to the numerator, you got to do to the denominator, is three-fifths smaller than 15 25ths. I found this one on Google. You're going to have to look at it quickly. It's going to disappear. Um, does that work all the time? And how many kids have been shown that by their elementary school teachers? One of my favorite cartoons that did show up, I taught stri Stripe How to Whistle. I don't hear him whistling. I said I taught him. I didn't say he learned it. And I think a lot of teachers work very hard to teach does not mean that the kids are learning. Let's talk about adding fractions. One year I taught fifth grade, the next year I got sixth grade. So I put this problem on the board, naked numbers, and most of the kids gave me that. I turned around and looked at them and said, who was your fifth grade math teacher? At which point they said, you were. <laughs> Made me realize that despite all the manipulatives I used, I had missed teaching them number sense about using fractions. So if we follow that same rule in subtracting fractions, does two thirds minus one half give us one over one? Mixed numbers, how many of your kids would write three and three fourths as the answer despite giving them step after step what they need to do? Why not think about five minus two is three and then let's take off three fourths? We don't stop to teach kids to think about what those numbers mean. One of my favorite Peanuts cartoons, yes ma'am, I understand you want more than just the math answer. You want me to explain how I got the answer? I copied it from the kid behind me. Not what we have in mind. And yet it's so often so true. Multiplication of fractions. So we've been through addition and subtraction where we have to find a common denominator, change to a common denominator, keep that denominator, and do the operation with the, numer with the numerators. Multiplication is going to be entirely different. Now we multiply numerators, multiply denominators, who knows what it means, but we just do it. And then we have the infamous canceling. I'm not sure quite what we're canceling, but that is a term I hear over and over again from kids. So when we're multiplying 7 tenths times 15 twenty-eighths, we can just cross out a bunch of numbers and come up with easier numbers to multiply. My favorite is division of fractions. Ours is not to reason why, just invert and multiply. The problem is, what number are we inverting and why are we changing the operation? No sense making it all on the part of kids. How about taking another look at that problem and thinking about it in terms of how many two-fifths can I make out of four-fifths? Instead of just flipping numbers, and I, this is one of my favorite, I'm going to flip the numbers and still divide because they might work better that way. Kids come up with all kinds of algorithms. We do the same thing with multiplication and division of decimals. We teach kids to move decimal points around with absolutely no reasoning about why they're moving them around. We just teach them the rule and then they get all mixed up with the rule. They can be taught through developing number sense. One of my favorites are all these formulas that we give kids. Um, this is just a bunch of letters as far as the kids are concerned. Okay, let me see if I've got these area formulas memorized. 
Um, I understand that one half the base times the height gives me the area, but I can't remember whether it's my height or the triangle's height that I'm supposed to be using. That was my summary of that cartoon. So everything you do in math should make sense to you, except trapezoids.